Hey everyone, Dom here, and welcome back to the channel. Today it's time for another tag video, and this one I've been sitting on for four weeks, trying to find an answer to the question, can you adapt it? So let's go find out how I did. So this tag's all about adaptations, whether it's book to film or book to TV. And I was tagged by Mari from Book Reading Coffee Drinking four weeks ago, and I've been trying to figure out some of the answers since then. Part of the issue that I've got is that I've not actually seen a lot of adaptations where I've actually read the book as well. It's either a case of I've read the book or I've seen the adaptation, but there's only a small number where I've actually done both. So I'll link Maury's video and her channel in the description box below. If you haven't already done so, go check her out. She's got a lot of great content. In the meantime though, let's go have a look at these questions. So question one is nice and straightforward. What is my favorite book adaptation? And for this one, it's kind of the low hanging fruit. It's the really easy answer, but I am gonna go with The Lord of the Rings, the Peter Jackson film adaptation trilogy. These ones, I just absolutely loved them. They've obviously done a lot for the genre in terms of fantasy adaptations, where previously you didn't see nearly as many as we've been getting since The Lord of the Rings. With regards to the films though, I just really loved the look of them, the sound, that soundtrack by Howard Shaw was absolutely fantastic. The casting, all of the characters just looked pretty much perfect and the whole thing was just exactly what I wanted to see. It wasn't a faithful adaptation in terms of a literal kind of scene by scene from the book, but that's not what you need and you can't really do that with an adaptation anywhere. There has to be some give and take, some things that are left out, maybe some things that are added in because it's a different medium and those different formats kind of have slightly different rules. They need some slightly different things to happen to make a cohesive end product. So as far as The Lord of the Rings goes, yeah, absolutely loved it. And I think it is probably for pure enjoyment more than anything else, my number one favorite adaptation. And then question two is the opposite of that. What is my least favorite adaptation? And again, with this one, I'm focusing on just ones where I've actually read the source material as well as having seen the adaptation. And it took me a while to get this one because I really couldn't think of anything that I just really didn't like. So I, I love, generally speaking, I love fantasy TV shows and fantasy movies because it's, it's kind of, it's what I live for. It's my happy place. I love finding new TV shows or movies that have a fantasy set in, you know, whether it's the magical creatures or the world itself. I just love pretty much anything I can get my hands on for this genre. So I did eventually think of one though that I wasn't really at home with. I didn't really like it as much, uh, certainly as much as I would really like to have liked it. And that is The Colour of Magic, the BBC adaptation from 2008 of Terry Pratchett's Discworld novel. This one, for me, it was kind of the opposite of what I've just said about The Lord of the Rings. It just wasn't really what I was looking for. It didn't have the look or the feel of essentially Discworld as I have it in my head. Part of it is down to the the artistic kind of direction that they took with this mini series. I think it was only a two-parter, but I just didn't like the way that it looked. It was kind of very minimal, I think, with the visual effects. And I think something like a Discworld adaptation, or to be honest, most fantasy adaptations, me personally, I think you do need quite a lot of effects, quite a bit of CGI to pull off a really good looking fantasy world and some of those magical events and things that happen within this world. And just in general, it's not the kind of direction they took with this particular Discworld adaptation. And for me, I just didn't enjoy it as much. You can make the argument regarding the books and say that uh, the colour of magic isn't necessarily the best of the Discworld books anyway. And and perhaps not the best one to be adapting. So you've got that kind of argument in there as well. But overall, it was the look and the feel of the adaptation that I didn't really like, as opposed to the story that it was telling. Question three is, if you could adapt any book, what would it be and why? And for me, I guess with this one, you're normally kind of gonna be answering with your favorites, because if they've not already been done, of course, Generally speaking, you're going to want to see your favorite books, your favorite series on the big screen or on the small screen, depending on what your preferences are. 
I'm going to take this literally though, so instead of listing a couple of my favourite series and saying how I'd really like to see them adapted, which I naturally would, I'm going to go for answering the question literally and giving a single book rather than the series. So for this one, I'm going to go with The Sword of Kaigen by M.L. Wang. This one I read recently and I think it would actually work quite well in a TV miniseries or possibly even a film adaptation. The author has already done so much work with regards to the characters and the actual story itself, but I think it would be great to see that explored a little bit more and have it kind of put into focus with really good actors actually portraying these scenes between the characters. It would also be really good and really fun, I think, to watch some of the magic at play here and some of those magical battles that they had on the mountainside of Kaigen. So I think for me, that's the one that I'd really like to see as an individual book adaptation. Question four is, what is an adaptation that was portrayed perfectly? And for me, there's two that really stand out. One of those I'm going to skip past though, because it's Lord of the Rings and I've already given that answer. The other one though that I think was portrayed pretty much perfectly for what I was looking for was A Game of Thrones, the adaptation of A Song of Ice and Fire by George R.R. R. Martin. Now, okay, yeah, we've got loads of complaints about the Game of Thrones adaptation, and in particular season eight, the ending of this series. Now, I'm not afraid to admit I didn't have quite as many issues with the ending of the series as most people, and partly this might be just because of what I've said. I love and I really lap up any fantasy adaptations or fantasy TV because I just love watching them. It's absolutely my happy place as far as TV shows to watch go. So I loved Game of Thrones, but again, it's really for me about the look and the feel of it, and I just think it looked pretty much perfect. It was exactly what I envisaged and all the different scenes as well, whether it's in Westeros or Essos or wherever else in the world it was, I just think it looked really, really good and the casting again was absolutely phenomenal. Question five is, if you could star in any adaptation, what would it be and who would you play? So this one, I think it's a bit similar to, is it question three, asking essentially what's your favorite series that you like to see adapted, but this one's more about the character side of things. So I think with this one, I am going to go with probably my favorite fantasy character, Dritz de Werden, the dark elf from R.A. Salvatore series set in the Forgotten Realms. So with this one, I think the original trilogy that Dritz de Werden was in, the Icewind Dale trilogy, I think would be the one that I would go for because I think maybe the story is a bit more interesting perhaps in the kind of origin tale of Dritz, but it's all very dark with so much said underground and I think that the Icewind Dale trilogy would give us a little bit more variety than kind of having those underdark tunnels and Menzo Baranzan and so forth. Although admittedly, I think it would be pretty cool to see a live action kind of reconstruction of Menzo Baranzan as well. I think Icewind Dale though, just because you've got that good variety of the different species as well, because we're seeing a lot more humans at this point and we've got the dwarves in there as well and the halflings. So you've got a good variety of characters, you've got a good variety of settings. Now, obviously, with this, we're just talking theoretical. We're not talking actual suitability for a role, in which case I would have none except for a non-speaking extra. So uh, definitely, I would love to be Dritz de Werden, just because I think he's a really cool character. And, uh, you know, as, as well as that, he's basically the star of the show. He's the main character, really, within this series. Although Wolfgar and Brunner and Catibri and Regis, they all do play a big part as well. Question six is, what is your preferred medium for an adaptation, TV miniseries or a movie? And I can make an argument for both, but I think I'll go along with what most people I've seen have said so far, and that is a TV miniseries, because you can just get a whole lot more into it. You've got a lot more room, and more importantly, I guess, a lot more time to devote to it, so you can really pace things correctly. You don't have to kind of rush them and miss things out because you can take it a bit slower and you can really put the correct amount of story and character moments and so forth into a TV series more than you can do in a movie. I think the main thing in the past had been all about the money side of things, but that's definitely changing now and you're getting a lot more money put into the TV shows as we've seen with some of these adaptations with, for instance, Game of Thrones and the upcoming 
wheel of time adaptation as well so there's definitely a lot more money in it so with a tv mini series there's no real worry about it not looking as good because there isn't a budget for it as long as you get obviously the right team behind it and you've got that initial backing the money is definitely there in this industry now because these adaptations quite frankly they are being so successful so it's absolutely amazing to see for someone like me who just loves a fantasy adaptation Question seven, if you could change anything from a recent adaptation, what would it be? This is another of the ones that I kind of really struggled with, but I've landed on Peter Jackson's trilogy adaptation of The Hobbit. This one, again, it's been a long time since I've read the book, many, many years, so I'm not going to pretend that I can remember everything about it, but I know that there's a whole lot that was in this movie adaptation that was not in the original source material, The Hobbit itself by J.R.R. Tolkien. With this one, yeah, there's been a lot of criticism about it being a cash grab and I'm not going to go against that and say that I don't think that was the reason for it or at least a large part of the reason for it. Not necessarily Peter Jackson, but you know, the studios and, uh, and the backers and so forth. They just wanted to milk it for everything they could. So from a business view, it did, I guess, make sense to have this as a trilogy because people would pay the money to go and see it or to buy it. In terms of the adaptation, I don't know how long it should have been. Maybe uh, maybe one long or two uh, kind of more normal length films, but it definitely didn't need to be a trilogy. There was just too much superfluous extra added into this movie or this movie trilogy and it just took it away from the source material too much and it was it almost became kind of a based on the hobbit rather than an actual adaptation of the hobbit so question eight is is there an adaptation that was better than the book now a lot of book readers will always say that the book is better than the film or the book is better than the tv show I'm not one of those for me, uh, partly because I've not seen too many adaptations, as I say, where I've already read the book as well, but also because I just judge each one individually on its merits. I don't treat it as an adaptation necessarily or a book that has been adapted. So for this answer, though, I am going to go with the Shannara Chronicles, which is a TV show that a lot of people don't like. I watched it recently, I actually really enjoyed it. I thought it really looked visually stunning and I really enjoyed the show itself. Now, as well as the show itself, I actually like that this kind of got me back into reading or reading fantasy. I'd been in a bit of a slump for a, a year and a half or so leading up to the point that I watched this show. But after I watched it, I went in and I picked up a couple of the Shannara books by Terry Brooks and started reading so that I could continue kind of the story and the characters and so forth. I had previously attempted to read three different times the Sword of Shannara and wasn't able to finish it on any of those occasions. So at this point I picked up the Elfstones of Shannara and the next couple. And Elfstones is probably the one that the TV show is most closely related to. It is based on the books as opposed to being a direct adaptation. It takes source material from a number of the books and kind of combines it into one storyline. So it's not a straightforward adaptation as some of the others are. What I found though was I really liked the story in the show more than I liked the story in the books, but also because I liked the characters in the show a lot more. Partly, you know, it's, it's easier to visualise them and so forth, so you've got that side of things. But also, one of my favourite characters from the show was Eritrea, and I thought she was a really good character and a really good kind of heroine as well. And in the books, she was just... She was a bit of a damp squib, if I'm honest. She was all kind of gypsy silks and a bit of a love interest for Will. And that's kind of it, really. Whereas in the TV show, she was a whole lot more. So I appreciated character from the TV show a lot more than I appreciated her from the books. Part of this might be because you kind of have that affinity with your uh, your kind of initial meeting of a character. So normally if you read the books first, you're maybe not as comfortable with the TV or the movie version of the character. Whereas in this instance, I'd seen the TV show first before then moving on to seeing these characters on the written page. So there might be that kind of layer to it as well, but I definitely think she was a much better character in the TV show than in the books. And the same with some of the others as well. Will was kind of okay, Will Olmsford in both of them. Amberly again was much better for me as adaptation Amberly to what she was in the original in the Elfstones of Shannara. So for my answer for that, 
Again, loads of people really didn't like this and I, I really don't know why because I thoroughly enjoyed the Shannara Chronicles. And then question nine is can you tag it? Tag some friends to answer these questions themselves. So like I've done recently, I'm not going to individually pick people out to ask them to record their own video. What I'll do instead though is invite you if you've got me access to come and put your answers in the tag channel of Wizardly Duo Discord. So this is somewhere that's specifically set up for people who want to give their answers to these tags but don't have a channel to record a video giving the answers themselves. So if you remember, feel free to go and put your answers in the tag channel on the Wizardly Duo Discord. And if you're not a member, why not? Come and join the fun. There's loads of chat on fantasy and sci-fi and just general topics as well. It's a really great community full of really friendly people. So everyone's welcome in there. Come and join in the chat. And that's it today. Thank you very much for watching the Can You Adapt It tag. Drop some comments down below as always, and again, give your individual answers to some of these questions. I'm always on the lookout for new fantasy TV and movies, because if I don't already know about them, obviously I'm not going to be able to watch them. So I'll be really interested to see what shows people can recommend to me. If you liked this video, don't forget your thumbs up, hit subscribe if you haven't already done so. I'll catch you in another video soon, I hope. But until then, as always, take care of yourselves, read some good books. Bye for now.